negative way. It really doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look at an example right now. I'm going to go through it pretty quickly with you guys because um, right now we're just introducing the concept. Examples are fairly easy and we'll get to them fairly quickly here. Okay, so we're looking at this example right here. Uh, when a drag racer crosses the finish line, the driver deploys a parachute and applies the brakes to slow the car down. The car begins slowing down when t equals 9.0 seconds and the car's velocity is v equals 28 meters per second. When t equals 12.0 seconds, the velocity has been reduced to v equals 13 meters per second. What is the average acceleration of the dragster? Okay. Um, it'll be best to sort of uh, draw a picture of the dragster. Right? Oh. How do you draw a dragster? Wheels first. Dragster. We're just we're just gonna go with that, all right? So let's kind of look at the scenario here, all right? Uh, the car's velocity at the time that we're taking our measurement, we'll go t equals well. Let's get our subscripts in there. T1 is 9.0 seconds. So we've already had our stopwatch going for about 9 seconds, and this is the time where we're first paying attention to him slowing down. Okay? Uh, the car's velocity at this time, V1, is going to be 28 meters per second. We'll take conventional positive and negative for our reference frame. So the car's velocity is, what was it, 28 meters per second. All right, now later on, we're looking at the car a little bit later on. Oh. Dragster, okay. Uh, we're now at T2. T2 is going to be 12.0 seconds. And the velocity is uh, less than it was before, right? Positive 13 point meters per second. So when we look at this, all right, we can see pretty easily how to solve this. We're going to go back to the initial equation that we got for the acceleration. That is acceleration is delta V over delta T. We can find delta V easily enough. We can find delta T easily enough, and we should do so. So the average acceleration being given by this equation here, we know v1, v2, t1, and t2. Let's just put those in. When we do so, v2 is 13 meters per second minus v1, which is 28 meters per second. And you'll notice something interesting here. We're going to end up with a negative value, uh, but not for time. We really shouldn't be ending up with a negative value for time. If so, you're going back in time. Which, if you can do that, let me know. We'll make things happen. All right? Nine seconds. Sorry. Whoa. Again. You guys just let me burn here. All right. Sorry. 12.0 seconds minus 9.0 seconds. And we end up with an acceleration of... What do we get? Sorry. Um, I gotta actually do this one. 13 minus that is negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5 meters per second squared. Now notice that our acceleration is negative in this case. All right. Uh, we have a negative acceleration. Acceleration is a vector quantity, so it has direction as well as magnitude, just like velocity, just like displacement. So if we look back at our car, knowing that its average acceleration is negative 5 meters per second squared, as in it is changing its velocity at 5 meters per second every second. 
Well, notice that the acceleration is in the negative direction. So what's happening here is the velocity is changing, but the velocity is changing in the negative direction. Now, a lot of physicists will say that there is no such thing as deceleration. You'll notice I haven't used that word up until now either, because really, it's much better, it's more specific for us to say there is a positive acceleration or there is a negative acceleration. Okay. Um, let's look at this a little more closely as well. 